Welcome to another edition of Drag for Older. This will be uh, what I call Smash and Grab. This will be what happens when uh, you get a phone call. What? You'll be here in 20 minutes. You said an hour and a half. Okay. Bye. This always happens. It's the way the world is. <laughs> Okay. Okay, eyebrows. I'm uh, using the pencil sideways because you get more coverage and you don't get a lot of strokes, visible strokes. This is uh, what I meant, uh, different strokes for different books. <laughs> well, if it wasn't making a, a tutorial, I could be playing music in the background. Uh, but since I'm Doing a boyfriend's coming over a lot sooner than he said. This song, this song that's running through my head is <laughs> Slow Down by the Beatles. Baby, don't you know I'm moving too fast? Ah. So. Take some dark powder, get rid of my wrinkly neck, and round my skull here, bring the side of the face forward. Excess. Grab all the sides of the nose.
Nicolás. Too crazy today. Mm -hmm. All right. Touch of brown. You can see this, you've done too much. You connect the bottom of the eyelid, eyebrow to the nose. If you can see it, you've done too much. And down the side of the nose. Carve in. And uh, with a very knife edge brush. Come down the center line of the nose. I'll take a Cha 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 chance of trying to bring your nose in. If you get close, stop. Uh, yesterday I said uh, I was going to suggest two things. And the first one was go to a professional makeup artist and get them to do your makeup based on skin tone, eye color, and all that. Take a picture of it. So you can see how good it could be. Second one is do your research online about what is the shape of your skull and what is the best hairdo for the uh, shape of your skull. And what color of hair would uh, suit your skin tone and undertones. A lot of people that I made up and they look in the mirror and they say I look like my mom or I look like my sister. So uh, that could be your guide.
lip brush. Very thin. Has an angle on it. And, uh, second suggestion is to buy one real human hair wig. And this will put you up into the uh, maybe 150 to 250 dollar range, but it will last for years and look better than any synthetic wig. But uh, don't spend that kind of money unless you've done the face shape, the hair that would complement it, the color you should have, or the color you want to be. And, uh, Buy one good wig. Okay. Smash and grab. If you use wigs that are uh, ombre, it looks a little more natural, like you dyed your hair blonde and gave up on it. Okay, now I'm down by, by the river. And uh, I'm in Vancouver, so <laughs> this is the river where Jimi Hendrix showed his baby. And <laughs> there's a little concrete monument over there. I want to talk about a couple of uh, related uh, items. One of them is Tea Girl Puberty, and the other one is a method from the uh, Schools of Higher Consciousness, which is called Inner Considering. And uh, one of the traps or part of the slavery that mankind lives in is considering inside of you what other people might think about you. And not doing things because of that, you're in your considering what will happen if I go out in drag. I'll get beat up, I'll get humiliated, I'll get scorned. My mom will find out. Um, so by doing that, you grow in beingness. And beingness as a noun. Like, how's your beingness? Like, how's your piano playing? So uh, I've been uh, living like full time for I don't know, six years, I think. I have not received one cat call. I haven't been threatened. I haven't been put down. Nothing bad has happened to me. And I go everywhere, <laughs> dressed. So uh, you got to get out, and uh, that's why they call it out. <laughs> and uh, related to that is uh, what I call T girl puberty, which is the puberty as a female you never got to have because you were, you know, considering. Because you were closeted. So two girl puberty is uh, six inch stilettos, black nylons, black leather skirt, super tight sweater with a very deep cleavage, big boobs, and uh, makeup. And if you dress like that, it's obvious what you are. 
because women don't dress like that. But you want to feel the way you want to feel. Uh, the upside of that is uh, trans girls have a value to men who like trans girls, and they like them a, a lot. So uh, half of the looks you might be getting <laughs> that make you inner consider, and you might be thinking they're hating on me or they're judging me as they want you, or they're too afraid to approach you. Uh, in my, um, maybe five years ago, in my heyday, I, uh, guys used to follow me in their cars and flash their lights. And people would uh, wait outside the bars to talk to me when I was leaving. They wouldn't want to be seen with me uh, in the bar, but they were uh, willing to talk to me in an isolated scenario. So if you've seen a Mario Brothers movie, be proud, be Goomba. Um, there's a website and a set of CDs called Deep Stealth by one of the first, uh, Calpurnia is the lady's name. She was in a movie called The Soldier's Girl. And she teaches feminism, boys' feminization, and things. Um, if you, you want to go out and not have to, when you consider people staring at you, try not going out in the T girl puberty outfit. That should be safe for gentlemen callers. Um, try to blend in with what the women in your neighborhood wear, which is probably <laughs> their hair pulled back, uh, a hockey team t-shirt, a puppy jacket, blue jeans or tights and running shoes, and no makeup. <laughs> And then they wonder, where are the men? What's going on? And the tea girl comes in with long feminine hair, beautiful 3D makeup job, uh, a dress. Oh my God, a dress. Are you kidding me? And uh, matching person shoes. <laughs> Uh, which you can do. Also, um, uh, women will be jealous of your persona because they were too lazy to do that. So they didn't wash their hair. Uh, they didn't do anything except put it up in a scrunchie. They didn't wear a fashionable feminine outfit, they, they, they're just wearing with casual clothes, which uh, don't do a lot for them. Uh, in Italy, all the women are dressed like uh, movie stars. They wear, they have big hair, they have big full red lips, they have dresses, they have <laughs> <laughs> purses made of Italian leather, but actually they're, they just call it leather. So uh, there is a little bit of resentment from females of you taking the very best of what they could have and package it all up and saying, here I am. Uh, the downside of that is uh, a lot of men are going to want to get to know you, but they don't want to be seen getting to know you because they'll be uh, clocked as being gay 
and being gay, you can still lose your job, your wife, your family, your friends. So to them, it's not worth it to, uh, to lose all of that, to date you. So you have to make it possible for them to uh, be in communication with you. And uh, actual boyfriends seem to be extremely <laughs> sparse. I only know one girl who has a boyfriend and she's hanging on with 10 fingers and 10 toes. She doesn't dance. I dance with him. He likes to dance. I, I like to dance. So yeah, we were dancing. We danced. Uh, and she was just giving me daggers. Uh, because of the possibility of me stealing her boyfriend. I wasn't stealing her boyfriend. <laughs> but uh, they're hard to find. I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, I was at my favorite haunt, and uh, near the end of the night, this really big guy came over, asked if he could sit down. I didn't know I was trans, and uh, we were talking, and I said, do you know I'm trans? And he said, no, and I went, well, I am, and he was like, oh, okay. So he left after a while, and at the end of the night, when I went out, he was standing on the sidewalk. So I chatted him up a little bit. And this is like 2 a.m. And I said, uh, can I give you a ride home? Because I'm going up the hill where you, where you live. And uh, he said, yeah. So I drove him home. And the conversation was basically, you're interested in me. Yeah, but he's married. So I said, so you, you're a husband who doesn't fool around? And he said, yeah. I said, can I have your autograph? So uh, I said, touch my leg. And he said, well, I said, I've got to get something out of this. <laughs> so he gave me a hug, stuck his hand up my skirt. You know? And I'm not interested in breaking up uh, marriages. So we both took the high road there. <laughs> and it was nice. Uh, behind this, these uh, two or three items is is your personal integrity. Um, always keep that in the foreground. That's more important than anything else. And uh, if you're going to be having sex with strangers uh, please use protection especially now with COVID being uh, transmissible also Lyme disease is transmissible and all the usual syphilis, gonorrhea herpes, all that stuff it's not worth it and uh, the um, uh, places that help uh, street people they have a sign on their wall and a box of condoms and they said you can either not have sex with me because you won't wear a condom or you can have sex with me ten times with a condom. Your choice. So there. Been coming down here every morning for uh, six years, I think. To watch the river flow.
it's a good start to the day. I have my <laughs> as big as my hand cup of coffee. <laughs> Most of what I'm doing now is uh, the early morning look. Uh, I met uh, a very old gentleman. He was from San Francisco and he would, had been in the, um, the gay bars in San Francisco that are famous in the history of drag as an MC of the shows that went on there. And he said, never go out without being completely done because he said you never know when you're going to meet somebody it could happen anytime so don't uh, don't um, not bother to put on a, a nice wig and do your makeup and wear a nice outfit and don't stink um <laughs> I like stories. My life has been full of, full of stories. Um, one day it was laundry day for me, so I took, I, I leave everything to the end. So I have nothing left. So I have these you know, two giant bags of laundry. So what, what am I going to wear? Well, I'm going to wear, I found a dress once in a garbage can. It was gray and looked like a sock. I had put on my shitty broken shoes, no nylons. Uh, my sloppiest bra because everything else was being washed and I looked in the mirror and I thought you look like crap so I put on a really cheap bad black wig that was just hacked off with scissors no makeup I'm going to the laundromat and I'm sitting uh, <laughs> the light and I feel somebody looking at me you know how you can do that? Like you go like what? And there's this guy in a van looking at me like, hey baby, what's happening? <laughs> I look look like, <laughs> like ratchet. <laughs> and I realize at that moment the, the ugly chicks have got it going on. Yes, bad hair, bad clothes, bad attitude. Men want you. So this just undoes everything I've just told you. True story. So I'm driving to the lounge and I'm going, oh my God, oh my God. All that work I've been doing. I get more response. Looking terrible. So I think I'll end on that high note. And uh, <laughs> keep my hooters to the floor that's a phrase for you keep your hooters to the floor